Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Ryan with Propelio. Today's show is going to be truly fun and awesome because I know nothing about lease options. So today we've got John Jackson, we got Joe Seski, and we're going to get into it. So jump in live, get those questions going, because because I don't know much about this subject, my questions will be limited to my tiny, teeny brain. So help us out, join, a com uh, join in, drop a comment, drop a questions, we'll get back to it. We'll be right back with lease options, right after this. All right, everybody, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Were you, you were about to like, oh. <laughs> so you do have a teeny right now. <laughs> uh, all morning, you've just been doing these snappy comeback, yeah. like chitty chats. I don't know if it's because of nervousness or you just don't like me. It's just me. Oh, it's oh, me. That's just your personality? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all good. You could be my best friend. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Take it as a compliment. So we've got John Jackson. Yes. And we've got Joe Seske uh, with, with Leasing to Buy. Yep. So yep. first of all, what is lease options? So I thought we were going to talk about multivitamins and healthcare. Right. I didn't know we were going to talk about lease options, but uh, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. So lease options uh, <laughs> are really a great way. There's no studio audience if you're waiting for a laugh. I was in my yeah. head. There's always a laugh track. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh, you know. So uh, so you know, uh, well, I've done lease options for almost 17 years, but lease options are, uh, I think, an underutilized tool in real estate especially for people starting off because uh, it allows them to work with nice houses and nice areas. You don't have to estimate repairs. They're move-in ready, and uh, you don't need money. You don't need credit. You don't have to go borrow private money or anything like that. Um, and so it's, to me, it's actually easier to get started with lease options than it is wholesaling. And now we do some wholesaling as well, but, but when I weigh the two, uh, to me, lease options are far easier. I don't have to go see the house. We do them nationwide. doesn't matter where they are. I don't have to negotiate or anything like that. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just a great way for investors, especially people who are starting off, to get involved in real estate. So in Texas, though, is because I know a lot of our audience is, uh, uh, is in Texas. Yeah. Obviously, we have a national reach and whatnot, but is lease options legal everywhere? Oh, yeah, they're legal. Uh, lease options are legal in every state. Okay. Um, uh, you know, Texas Granted, is we're not attorneys. I'm not an attorney, but I do right. play one on Propelio. Got it. Got it. Uh, so, I know. Uh, so Texas has specific laws about lease options, and um, uh, back in 2005, but uh, you know, didn't slow us down. We had to update our contracts, uh, and that was about it. But even to this day, uh, I still have a, real estate attorneys that call me to educate them on the law, mm -hmm. and I still have attorneys that call me to buy my contracts. Um, but uh, but you know, part of the problem with uh, Texas or the laws with Texas and lease options is uh, there's so much confusion because people go online to certain real estate forums that right. will remain nameless uh, that and you know they get all this all this rumors and the, and the garbage and the BS and stuff and none of it's true keyboard you know? lawyers yeah keyboard lawyer I've never heard that term I, I like just that. coined it hashtag keyboard lawyer. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> hashtag keyboard keyboard lawyer yeah, yeah. I like that uh, and so you know, the people that have all the questions haven't read the law. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, since I was so deeply involved with it in 05, um, you know, I knew the law inside and out, and we just made those adjustments and kept on going. So so what is the law? Well, it, it, I mean, it's, you know, a few pages long, but basically, if you're going to do a lease option in Texas, and not to bore the people that are watching, but you've got to have the right documents. Mm -hmm. The documents have, have to have specific verbiage in them, okay? Uh, and uh, you cannot do certain things. Basically, imagine this. The laws are about protecting the buyer. So you can't do common sense things like lease option a house that's in foreclosure, right? The payments have to be current because um, that was a big issue that they were having. Uh, the payments have to be current. Uh, the buyer has to be able to verify the payments are being made. Um, and the seller has to have fee simple title. Now, I've talked to, I can't tell you, countless real estate attorneys that don't even understand what fee simple title is. So I'll explain what fee simple title Thank is Thank you, because that was giving me my follow-up <laughs> yes, question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so fee simple title, people assume the word fee simple, they think in their head they literally hear free simple. It's not. They think it has to do with you have to have the mortgage paid off. It has nothing to do with the mortgage. You know, in real estate, there's a mortgage and there's the title, right? You can have the title of the house, but still have a mortgage, right? You pay Chase mortgage or whoever, but you got the title of the house, right? Two totally separate things. 
Uh, but uh, fee simple, title is how we hold title in the state of Texas. It's considered absolute title. It's considered the purest form of title. It has nothing at all, nothing to do with the mortgage. So uh, almost all the houses we work with have a mortgage, have an underlying lien on them. Uh, well, you can do that, but the seller has to have fee simple title. Uh, and what that means is with lease options, there's uh, one type called a sandwich lease option where you stay in the middle between the seller and the buyer. You're kind of subletting the property. Uh, in that case, you can't do that in Texas because you as the investor don't have fee simple title. The original seller does. Mm -hmm. I know I just covered a crap ton in about 60 seconds. Hey, I, I'm all for that. And just a simple plug. <laughs> Uh, I know you guys came in and filmed for, for the Propelio Academy. Yep. A link is that uh, to that course is in the description. Um, you know, I think it was you or it's not you. Everybody always says riches is the niches. And, oh, and yeah. Joey, we talked about, you were joking earlier about wholesaling and this and that. Mm -hmm. uh, as an educator uh, from, for the lease option side of things, how does that compare to the wholesaling world? As far as niches are concerned? Just, I was just, that was a segue. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. <laughs> that's in TV terms. That's Joe, a uh, uh, John, same question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. To answer that, I mean, yes. Uh, as far as uh, riches in the niches, I think the the big takeaway there is don't try. And I see this as the coach for mm -hmm. you know our partners we bring on. Um, I see a lot of people trying to do everything at once, right? So I want to do wholesaling. I want to do fix and flips. I want to do lease options now, and they're spreading themselves too thin, and everything just collapses, right? So uh, what I would suggest is pick one niche, you know, whatever you're most interested in, you know, for us it's lease options, um, and just stick with that, focus on that, and run with it instead mm -hmm. of spreading yourself out. But, but in, in terms of like uh, comparing it to like the wholesaling world, like how does it compare? Well, with wholesaling, you've got to go, someone pretty much has to see the house. Uh, you've got to negotiate. You have to know, have an idea of what repairs cost. Dude, I couldn't tell you how much a foundation costs to repair. <laughs> like, I don't even know how they do it. You know, some guys from Home Depot or something, I don't know, show up in a truck with a trailer and some concrete, I don't know, and next thing you know, the house is level. Right. And then all the sheetrock needs to be replaced. I don't even know how much it costs. With the lease option, I don't need to know anything on repairs because other it, it's move-in ready. Because we're talking about, in our area, $250,000, $300,000 houses. So, so in, in, in this is a good question, uh, somebody on YouTube, what is the advantage of lease to own rather than owner financing? So uh, a couple of differences there. With what we do, uh, so owner finance and lease options, two totally separate things, so, so very good question. Um, with owner financing, you need to have uh, the title of the property, whether you took it subject to, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Um, and uh, if, they, if the end buyer defaults, then you foreclose on them, right? With the lease option, the way we do it, we do a, a lease option assignment. We never own the property. We're just flipping the paper, right? And so the end buyer it just has a lease with a separate option of purchase. If they were to default, then they just get evicted. In Texas, there's a 30-day notice, then they're, then they're evicted. But it's two totally separate things. So uh, to answer that question, uh, you know, I'd really have to know, you know, is it properties that that person owns that they're looking to for an exit strategy and what is the difference there if you own a property and you're, you're looking at exit strategies uh, with the owner of finance you're having to deed the house you know you deed the house over right and if they default you foreclose on them uh, and you're typically getting like 10 percent down or maybe more on the lease option there's no need no deed transfer and it's no very risk. short no risk it's very short term so on the lease option, if I'm if I'm hearing correct, because again I'm this is new to me, the because the note stay not the note the the deed, the deed. stays in place of the original owner. Are you basically just brokering mm. the the the, no, the deal? Can, absolutely not. No, because we're not an agent. But what we're doing is is uh, we're simply just like a, a wholesaler assigns our contract yeah. to the end buyer. That's what we're doing, except our end buyer isn't a cash buyer. It's someone that's going to get traditional financing. Right, and then, and then, but it's because they're still leasing it, they're leasing it from the, the, owner. the original owner. Yes. And so they're taking payments. And then are you, are you increasing this? Is there a spread on it? Like, how sandwich. do you make it? Yeah, that would be a sandwich. Yeah, so, we, so with the lease option assignment that we do, it's, there's a, it's a uh, one pop, one pop uh, transaction. Okay. We get paid that assignment fee, just like a wholesaler gets paid an assignment fee, and that's it. So we don't make a spread on that. Uh, because that would be a sandwich lease option where we're staying in the middle. Okay, so so I've got home, and again, forgive me, forgive me. Everybody. Oh, this is great that you don't. Uh, yeah, so there I've is got confusion, a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I've got a homeowner, and we'll just call them um, Alfred, 
Alfred can, can the homeowner. Be, how about Sam the seller? Sam the seller? Okay. Who's Alfred? I don't know. Who's Sam the seller, they got a house. Um, they want to sell, but no one will buy. Wholesalers want to give them $2, and they want $200,000. Uh, owner finance guys want to give them $150,000, and they want $200,000. Uh, you come in, and you're like, look, what we could do is just basically turn this into a lease option, which is uh, you still own the house. You'll get somebody renting it from you. Um, and then I'm assuming the, the, the bill the buyer. Okay, Bill the Buyer. Bill the Buyer. It's got everything hey, else once, down, but the names this, are like, mm, yeah, stuck on I know. <laughs> they want to buy the house or they want a lease option, but they got to come in with a down payment. And then you, because you're structuring the deal, you keep the down payment and then they get the payments? Yes. Uh, you that's you pretty well nailed it. You The names it's are kind of... almost kinda, like a prepared. Yeah. The names are kind of jacked, like Alfred. Yeah. I didn't even okay. get it. But let's assume you're the Sam the seller, all right? Right. Your day's been your your house been on the market sixty days. You're trying to look for Plan B, but you really don't want to be a landlord. But you're not going to take seventy, eighty cents on the dollar, right? But you are getting frustrated. Right. Right. So now I come along and say we can do a lease purchase on it, a short term, twelve month lease purchase. You get full price, no commission, all right? And I've got Bob the buyer over here, so you and I have the agreement: full price, no commission. Right. And you're going to cash flow, so you. It's going to be great for you. And so I come. I but I'm my, not a landlord because I'm trying to sell so, it. So now you're right. So now Bob the buyer, assuming Joe's the buyer, right. comes along, Bob. says, oh, Bob comes along and says, I love the house. <laughs> this is great. He but I a, can't get approved. He for can't a get mortgage. approved for a right. mortgage yet. Maybe he just went to a 1099 job, whatever the case may be. No, I maxed out all my credit cards. Okay, he maxed out all his credit Still cards. Still haven't recovered from 08, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 2020 is the new year. He had a bad trip <laughs> in Vegas. And uh, so he comes along, pays me my my option fee, the down payment, the assignment fee of about 4%, and, uh, and gets in the property, he's making payments to you every month, you're cash flowing each month, he's taking care of the repairs, he gets a home warranty, everything's super great, and within 10 to 12 months, he's cashing you out uh, with traditional financing. Because at that point, he gets a refi, yep. well, it's not a refi, it's, it's, not just, a refi, a it's just get his acquisition, yep. but then that original down payment, it would go towards the... Towards the purchase. Okay. Yep. And, and the advantage that we have that we can offer the seller, you know, as opposed to an owner finance, you know, sure, we could take control of the property. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw so I saw that Sure, too. we could but, take control of the property subject to, and then owner finance it out. Um, you know, the seller may not be that desperate yet or want to do that. Um, with us, if the seller can just wait 12 months while we have their payments covered, we can cash them out at full price with no commissions or costs or fees. And that's a huge... And service. as far as the hands-on, because already it sounds like, again, if you're not, because if you're not taking title, you're not having to go through the headaches of going through title work. And because you're not the landlord, you're not having to deal with all that. How How clean or dirty are your hands in this transaction other than going in and presenting this this type of deal and then finding a, a bob to come in and, and, and acquire yeah so so uh, the way that we structure everything it's it, it you just don't have any issues because uh the way that we do the way that we work leasing to buy and the way that we teach uh with leasing to buy and with with what we do because working with homeowners that they're not super desperate in other words they're not so in the academy, you'll see one of the, one of the uh, 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 things we teach is the levels of desperation. So there's a difference between the le level of desperation of a homeowner with a $250,000 house that needs to move in about 60 days, but the house hadn't sold, and he's looking for a kind of plan B, versus a homeowner that's saying, hey, take my house subject to, here's the deed. Totally right. different. So, uh, so first of all, we're dealing with homeowners that um, that are good, good people, good, you know, good jobs, good credit, nice house, nice beautiful houses, house. Yeah, no repairs. No, no repairs. And on the buying side, we're dealing with people that have, uh, you know, great jobs, good income, have owned one or two or three houses before, but maybe they're relocating and don't want to spend three months, you know, driving around, you know, having to fly in, fly in all the time, looking at houses. Uh, this way, they can get into a house quickly. Um, they uh, they don't have to worry about all the qualification stuff first, as far as you know, with a lender. Mm -hmm. So get someone to the house quickly. Uh, we've helped a lot of buyers that um, have been uh, a, a lot of uh, nurses, doctors, people in the medical field, uh, people in the oil industry. That was a big thing for us. Uh, we I did a lot of houses for people back when the Barnett Shell was first you know, really popping. A lot of people that would go from say one company to the other, doing the same thing, making great job, great credit. But they went from, say, a 1099 job with Chesapeake 
to a W-2 job with uh, XTO. And so now they need six months. And they're like, well, I can't buy a house. So they come to us. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, the important thing that you touched on is when we put buyers into one of our properties, we're making sure that they do get the financing. Yeah. We're not just putting them in there and say, well, good luck. You know, um, We have no liability or anything like that. Um, we work with them. If, if we pull a credit application and we see that we can't work with a buyer and get them financing within 12 months, we won't work with them. Because you, right. you hear a lot of these horror stories. Well, I did a rental owner or a lease option before, blew up in my face because nobody told the buyer what to do during that lease period so that they could go out and get a mortgage. So it sounds like you need maybe not a significant back office, but you do need a back office transactional team. Cause, cause mm -hmm. again, and, and I see you shaking your head, but like, cause I know in like, again, wholesaling world, flipping world, you, 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 you get the contract, you get it to closing, you take your check and you run away. And as you scale and get bigger, yes, you need to have a back office. You need to have transaction coordination on your team, but it seems like something like this, when you do have things that are maybe three, six, eight months down the line, that you, it, it seems like you, there's a lot more handholding. Like the, the timeline of that relationship is much longer than with a wholesale or with uh, a flip. Okay. So you see where I'm going yeah, with yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you're right. So we, we'll hold our hand, well, we hold our hand to the extent that you know, we may check on them, you know, on them, you know, six months or eight months. We pull credit periodically. Yeah, but we're not, we're not like, you know, uh, well, walking them through the, the step, you know, every day. Um, we give, we tell them, well, like today, we had a, a yep. client that uh, had applied, they were approved, good to go, um, put down the money, and they needed a, they'd seen credit improvement on a few things, so they said, okay, here's where you go, uh, go to this link, bap, 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 and they'll get, uh, Right. Six, so when the buyer months. moves in or prior to, to the move in, we tell the buyer, okay, you will need to do X, Y, and Z during the lease period. But then that's it. And then we're pulling credit periodically to make sure that they're making progress. But, but something it. like that could be like a, a, an email drip or like here's a packet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you don't yeah. even. Yeah, we give yeah. them a form that says you're going to need to do this by these dates exactly, follow these steps, and that's it. And we'll check up on you periodically. Well, that that's. that. I, I, I take back my last concern of, well, of handling. That's a good concern. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get, um, you know, as we've done, I don't know, uh, probably, well, between us, probably uh, over eight, well, I know over 800, probably close to 900 lease options, transactions, not including what our students have done, but with, with what we've done, uh, I know for a fact that over 98% of our buyers get financed within 10 to 12 months. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as, like, the amount of money that you can make on this, like, what's an average trend? And I know it's, yeah. it depends on the location, but what do you think an average? It depends on the location. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's on average, because we have students across the U.S., but yeah. on, on average, uh, you can figure, uh, you know, we really don't do anything for less than 8500 normally. Right. Uh, but on average, it's about ten to 12000 on but that's, average. I mean, that's, that's an above average assignment fee. That's about average for us. 10 to right. that's, that's that's really good. When I was in Pennsylvania, I mean, I would do maybe like eight or nine thousand. You could choose your price range. I mean, we could bring in million dollar homes all day oh, long yeah. right. and charge you know four hundred thousand whatever. Um, but it's it's up to you. You know, you could do um, homes that are sixty thousand. You know, those existed where I'm from, Pennsylvania. Um, but I avoided those because I wanted to work with nice houses, um, you know, in nice areas. And at the end of the day, you can charge whatever option fee you like. So what about marketing? Like, how are you finding these buyers? Is it a case of just jumping on MLS and then seeing what's 30 day plus and going in and be like, hey, clearly you want too much. Nobody's going to buy it, but I have a solution that might help you out. Yeah. So for, for the sellers, you said for the buyers, for the sellers. So That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Marketing for the sellers and marketing for the buyers. So marketing for the sellers. There's multiple ways that, that we teach to market. And this we, is on our courses or, or the concept. Yeah, that we yeah. Have. And uh, and we t yeah, because on the on the on the academy we talked about like 18 or 15 different ways to market to sellers, and almost all were free. But um, uh, you know, Joe uh, Joe's really good at like the tech tech stuff and 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 use Propelio and this and that to to find uh, uh, Propelio. <laughs> I can't say the name. <laughs> anyway, uh, whereas I'm really good at uh, direct mail as far right. as knowing how to because direct mail is an art and that's uh, direct mail is one of the more expensive ways of market but um, what we'll do to answer your question is for like for me for direct mail we'll pull uh, houses that are in a specific area county zip codes whatever that are listed on the market for over 60 days and we have a very specific mail piece that we send to them so um, we may, I may send so 
to give you an example of my typical direct mail campaign is every other week, 60 days on the market, uh, we're repulling that list and each mail piece, each, I'm sorry, each mailing, I'm sending about 700, seven to 800 pieces, okay? And so that's, for the mail piece we use, it's very specific. It's not some ugly yellow letter. Right. And, um, which we talk about in the academy about direct mail, how to do it. Um, so we'll send, I'll spend seven to $800 every mail campaign. But on something like that though, <clears throat> yes, you're targeting high, highly targeted, but you're targeting potentially a whole, a new, these people are mostly only targeted with realtor type correspondence. They're not really targeted from like investor correspondence. At yes. least I'm as as yeah, assuming. Yeah. So these the people we're targeting nor, with the direct mail, they're not getting mail from anybody. As far as realtors, because right. realtors can't market to them. If you ever get a piece from got a realtor, it, look it. at the bottom or somewhere that says, if your house is currently listed, this is not a solicitation to, to sale or whatever. Uh, yeah, I forgot and that so, you said that they're, they're already 60 days in. Yeah. yeah, and so investors aren't hitting them because there's no equity. They're not popping up on their, on, their, uh, uh, on their list. I mean, what investor goes, hmm, let me see what house has been on the market, listed with an agent that's on the market for 60 days. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. I'm the only one. So, uh, and so if someone wants, so as we teach our students and they're doing these mailings, the success rate, you know, is very high. We so, also target FISBOs and rentals oh, yeah. and things like yeah. that. So you don't need to do, do a crazy direct mail marketing campaign from the start. Um, how I did my first few deals was I found FISBOs on Craigslist, on Zillow, and I contacted them. But the best way and the most efficient way is to do a direct mail campaign every month. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm getting a little excited over here just because it's, it's, <laughs> Because we talk about it all the time about finding those niches that nobody else is in. Fish where nobody's fishing, as mm -hmm. Dan Diaz said like two or three years ago here. Fish where nobody's fishing. Yep. So like if no, if you don't know of anybody doing this, chances are you're going to be the only person that's going to do it. And you know, I've, there's several questions in here. Is this legal in Texas? Is this legal everywhere? And we we covered at the very beginning. It is legal everywhere. Oh yeah. Obviously, consult your attorneys because we're not attorneys. But that being said, as Propelio attorneys, uh, <laughs> this is entertainment only. But yeah, it's it's a it's a function that you could do anywhere, uh, mm -hmm. and you can make. We had students in Canada, yeah. Canada, uh, New Zealand. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So international people, international. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, as far so we covered marketing, we covered uh, profit, uh, we covered lo locations. What what have I missed so far? Um, that's other than I, I think I think concept. I want to circle back on what you just said uh, that I think is very key here that I want people to understand is the competition and lack thereof yeah so when people start off on real estate so many times they start off with wholesaling or they want to do fix and flip or wholesaling. what can I start with no money or not not much yeah and that's and it's least options but nobody's really doing them especially not to scale or like doing we them do. right or doing them properly doing them yeah properly. yeah because we'll get we'll get students that come to us um, and that went through somebody else for some training and they come to us and we have to unthink them right and like okay forget all that forget what you just learned because it's totally wrong and uh so it's almost an, it's very rare to have someone doing lease options and doing them properly mm -hmm. um and we help people across the u.s and mm -hmm. well one thing i do want to point out is just because it sounds simple or is simple doesn't mean that it's impossible uh like or that, that didn't make sense I don't know. Well, the, I will the, say the concept well, well, I was trying to make well, is it sounds so simple, yeah. and it's like because I think a lot of times people are like, oh, if it's if it's that simple, why isn't everybody doing it? So therefore, I'm not even going to try it. That's you the need point. The, you need the right make. documents. You need you need to know. You know, can you work with the buyers? If so, how long will they need for you know before they could get financing? Um, you need to know what properties to target. You know, what sellers? What are the criteria? Um, but at the end of the day, we're just finding sellers that want to sell a house and we're finding buyers who are having a little uh, trouble currently qualifying for, for a mortgage, we're hooking them up and um, everybody wins because the seller's getting what they want, full asking price, mm -hmm. no commission. The buyer's getting a house that they otherwise couldn't own um, and they're paying full market price because they want to own a house. You mm -hmm. know, we're not ripping people off, but the buyers are willing to pay, you know, full price 
because they want they just want to own a house mm. you know so everybody's happy and that's the nice thing about what we do versus wholesaling is we don't have to make an offer we're not offering you 50 cents on the dollar we're on the same team here we're trying to get you full market price and the most we possibly can on the seller side. Um, and then on the buyer side, you're gonna own a house, but we, we're not ripping you off because when they go for financing, the bank's gonna order their own appraisal, um, but everybody wins and we make a small profit for, for doing so. So we, we touched on the buyers a little bit. I'm gonna take a quick break, mm -hmm. but when we come back from the break, I do wanna get into the, the, the process of, of uh, uh, qualifying your buyers, whatnot. So, uh, Again, talking about lease options, we got Joe, we got John, uh, and check out their course on the Academy, uh, propelio.com slash Academy, talking about lease options. Trey's gonna take us to a break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about the buyer side and then jump into some of the co uh, questions. So if you have questions, pop, uh, them, in. pop them in now, because we're gonna wrap up quick, because these guys got another point making up, coming up soon. All right. Propelio.com, what does Propelio offer? Lead generating websites. Access to true MLS comps. Off market lead lists. And deal alerts. Get them all today at Propelio.com. This is Steve. Steve is a successful real estate investor. Steve is wearing glasses, so therefore you know he's a successful real estate investor. You go, Steve. Go, Steve, go. Go get those dollars. You see that blue dot? That's Steve. Just looking at houses left and right. Let them go. Get the Propelia mobile app and drive for dollars today. All without leaving your car. And we're back. Today we've got Joe Siski, we got John Jackson talking about lease options. Check out their course on Propelio Academy uh, they, where they go into full detail on pretty much everything we covered today. Uh, we're talking about buyers. So in subject two, you do the RMLO process, something like this, or that's not particular, on the owner finance, you get an RMLO. Right. For something like this, how do you qualify your buyers? So um, the, actually qualifying the buyers is, it's easy for, for us because we've done it for so long. Cross your fingers. Yeah, you cross your fingers. Yeah. If they can fog a mirror. Tap normally, three times. So <laughs> then they get in. Spin and spit. Yeah. <laughs> If they have all their belongings in the back of a pickup, they're good. So if they basically if they can afford a down no, payment and no. they can make rent. No, I was kidding, guys. I was kidding. <laughs> no, and that's one of the things that people don't know how to do. So we look at the applications because uh, applications come through our system. We look at them the same way a lender is going to look at them. We look at the first thing we look at is debt to income because that's the thing that kills almost. You know, if it's, yeah. if something's going to kill an applicant, it's almost always debt to income. Right. They're applying. They're they think they they said well. As an example, well, I can um, I can afford this, what eighteen hundred dollar a month rent house that they're in. So I, can, I know I can afford two thousand dollars a month or, or twenty two hundred, whatever it is. We pull the application. We're like, well, you may be able to afford it, but qualifying is a totally different thing. Right. We're looking at debt to income. If it's getting close to forty three percent, we either can't help them with that house or we can't help them at all. Uh, we look at the uh, the tri merge report. All three all three scores, not just scores, but the actual reports to see what's on there. Are there current delinquencies, how, how long ago was the last late payment on something, or what's going on that's preventing them from getting financed. And uh, uh, so we'll see, we'll see things all across the board. But, uh, but normally, at the end of the day, we're looking, at, it's looking, we're looking at debt to income, and we're looking to see, can you get qualified within 10 to 12 months? Mm -hmm. And that requires us looking at all three. Yeah. Uh, all we look at the scores. Mm -hmm. We look at their credit history. Um, two things, income and credit. Obviously, if they can afford it, and, and then you could go on any rabbit hole you like. You know, well, I have the income, but I don't report it, right, on my taxes, or I change jobs, or credit-wise, maybe they don't have bad credit, maybe they just don't have credit, and, and that's a problem, so you just have to establish credit. So one of the things that I do as, as a coach, as a mentor for our students, is we dive deep into that. You know, there's a, re a reason loan officers are certified and have to go through that training, because it is, you know, you do have to know what you're looking for, but there's general things you pick up on and you'll know, okay, I can either work with these people within 12 months or not and go from there. But that's that's one thing that takes a little bit of time and experience to build up for sure. Mm -hmm. And as far as marketing to find them though, like how do you find, like, cause I know, uh, um, 
Mitch Stevens uh, down in uh, San Antonio, he has this huge book of business for, for buyers for owners, for our owner finance product deals because he does his bandit signs. And anytime anyone is interested on any level, he puts them in his system and mass texts mm-hmm. them for a future project. Do y'all do that similar where if you get somebody, they're in your little mm-hmm. book of business and you send it out next time you get something? Yeah, so well, you do a lot of the marketing for our students as well. So yeah. I'll let you the owner on finance that. buyers are going to be very similar as far as marketing to the lease purchase buyers because they're both in the same boat. Um, the lease purchase buyers want to own. They might be a little bit better as far as being able to get financing soon, whereas the owner finance buyers, well, you know, they'll never maybe be. They need that owner finance. Um, but as far as locating the buyers, um, it's pretty simple. We do a lot of. We do a lot of, I have to sit up here, uh, we do a lot of, uh, we, we do ads on Zillow, Craigslist, our own site, leasingtobuy.com. Um, we also do some, uh, we have some capture sites online that we, we uh, pair with a lot of SEO stuff. So we do build up a buyer's list and put them on an email list as well as we'll stick a sign in the yard, we'll run ads online, just the regular sites. And that, that usually does it. Facebook Marketplace is becoming popular now. Right. Mm-hmm. So, because I know you got to get out of here, mm-hmm. and I want to make sure we get as many questions because we got a ton populating in. What are some like some high level things that were like, oh, we probably should have talked about that, or I should have asked? You need to have the right documents. Right documents. Yeah, yeah. Do not, for the love <laughs> of God, don't go to a real estate forum online and ask somebody where can I get free documents for whatever lease option, uh, whole anything. If, you don't, if you're not willing to put the money into just the right documents for your real estate business, then you gotta really rethink about, is this something I wanna do? So don't, don't get free documents. Uh, I personally am vehemently opposed to this one page, you know, option agreement or whatever. Oh, we're just sending this one page document. No, that's, that's a, it's not, you know, you could wipe your rear with it. It's, it's worthless. Our documents are uh, 19 pages long, but it's got a lot of CYA in there. Um, so get the right documents, um, no matter what you're going to be doing, whether it's lease options mm-hmm. subject to you know, uh, wholesale, whatever the case may be, get the right documents. Uh, and something else I'd say is that, that really, um, that we do without thinking about it, but uh, it, when, as we're doing this in front of the students, they're always like, wow, that was easy, is when they're talking to sellers, um, listen to the problem. Don't chase the money, listen to the problem. I say, like when we have students that are nervous of talking to sellers, I say, well, be the doctor. You know, uh, you're, you're listening to the problem, whatever the case may be. And now with, uh, the, with our sellers, it's not, oh, my grandmother died and this house is a piece of crap and it's falling apart. Our sellers, it's simply, well, um, you know, we, we bought another house, we're moving there in three weeks or whatever the case may be. It's a totally different level of problems. But I'm listening to it, oh, okay, uh-huh, listen to it. And be the doctor and say, well, here's a prescription. It's a lease option, full price, no commission. Mm-hmm. They don't take it, okay. It's not your job to make them take the prescription. You're just saying, I'm the doctor, here's the prescription. And set the numbers correctly as well. Oh, don't overprice a house, as yeah. I've heard other ways. You know, oh, who cares? Just give the seller what they want. At the end of the day, the lender is going to you know, do an appraisal for the buyer, and it has to appraise. So don't just choose whatever. There's, there's, a, there's scenarios where the seller does want more than what we think it will appraise for, and we talk them down to reality. Most times not, but make sure that you set the, uh, the option price correctly, you have the right documents, and uh, take action. Don't mm-hmm. be afraid to talk to people. Um, you're gonna stumble through it, you're gonna fail. We did, we didn't you know, come out of the womb knowing how to, how to do lease options. Um, just take action and don't sit behind your computer and try and, you know, oh, I need this software, I need this, you know, just dive in. He's got the mental image of, of John like, <laughs> I'm sorry, out, sorry. like just going, like doing like the Fonz, like, yeah. hey! Hey! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we get into the questions, as far as how can people get a hold of you, uh, I know you all do mentorship, you do training. What's a little, like an elevator pitch on that real quick? Yeah, just, uh, and we don't, we don't take on, unlike, you know, the big national guys, our goal is to take on a bunch of students. We're selective on who we take on, and because when we work with them, it's, it's you're basically becoming an affiliate leasing to buy. And there's only two of us. And there's only two of us, so we're very picky about who we work with. But as far as just more information in general about lease options, what we do, the training and everything, of course you've got uh, Propelio Academy. Uh, you Good can job. Always, 
Yeah, I said it right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you can also Which go to. Which is a great source to pull oh, comps yeah. from. I use it all the time. Appreciate it. And uh, you can also go to leaseoptionclasses.com uh, to learn more. Just there's a lot of free videos on there mm -hmm. as well. And we'll drop all those links here too. Okay. So. All right. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Yeah. Or you take the first one. Uh, okay. What's the requirements needed to make lease options work in Texas? This is from Pro uh, Equity Cash Buyers on YouTube. Nope. I'll, I'll take it. You it's need Texas. to have the right documents. Yeah. <laughs> you've got to for Texas. You have to have the right documents. So I spent over thirty thousand dollars on my contracts because of, of, of I mean, it was worth it to me. This is my baby, right? So I spent over thirty thousand dollars on my contracts. So they're they're very very airtight. I went through more than one attorney. I uh, went through uh, some, a couple of different firms, a couple of attorneys, and it's always tweak 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 tweak. Uh, so you got to have the right documents. Um, you have to have the right disclosures. So if there's which a, are in one, the documents, which are in the documents, the mortgage information. Um, and you don't want to do a lease option over three years. Or a sandwich. Or a sandwich lease mm -hmm. option. And that's it. And that's the biggest things, yeah. Uh, Jason Taylor, this is a propeller. He was like, how does this compare to PropStream? Uh, what I would suggest is take a trial and mm -hmm. figure it out for yourself. Yep. Like, I'm not a big fan of talking about, you know, similar companies. Just, just take a trial. It's and, free. And I use both. Yeah. And sometimes there's varying data. Sometimes I could find yeah. data in an area where the other one can't. I like to use both, but I, I have a soft spot for propeller. Well, I, we appreciate that. Yeah, and I always say, is like if you're a real estate investing to expert, use. you should be using, you know, multiple sources. Mm -hmm. Even because again, if it if if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a month, what's a few hundred dollars in software oh, fees? Yeah. I mean, anyway, that's just my own. Uh, Denise, with lease options, do I have to disclose to the seller how much money the tenant buyer is giving me uh, the option for? Good yes, question. yeah, you do. And I don't care what anybody else says out there. That's another thing that you've got to be fully transparent. Yeah, we this hide nothing. A, yeah, this isn't a shell game where the seller sees this, but they don't see this, and the buyer sees this, but they don't see that. Uh, we do lease option assignments. So at the end of the day, the seller is going to see what we make. The buyer sees what we make. The lender sees Everybody sees mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, on the lease option, monthly payments, do the seller get the payment? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, once you take that down payment, you're out. Unless it's a sandwich, which you cannot do in Texas. Got right. it. Uh, I guess for me, most lease options are disguised as sales in the eyes of the IRS and a real estate litigation judge. That's a huge no-no in my reasons for not using them. Mm -hmm. Would you like to jump on that? Yes, uh, we, don't, we don't acknowledge the IRS. We're sovereign <laughs> citizens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so I, I, I understand the question. I'm, I'm not a tax attorney, and I, too, don't agree the IRS exists. So I'm not, I under, anyway, sorry. Yeah, so I'm not an IRS expert. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when, when someone um, uh, throws up a, a comment or a question like that, um, it comes down to, well, what issue have you had right. so far with lease options? Right. And with the IRS and, a, and, a, and, a, and the judge. Yeah, and the truth is they, they haven't. They're just trying to think of, well, what if? And at the end of the day, in, in our, in our I don't do this because I could go to prison. Yeah, it, it, it's it, like if you're paying your taxes, they don't care. Right. And, and the, you do have to pay taxes on, right. your, on your profit, yeah. you know, but yeah. they yeah. are legal. I mean, we've been doing them for yeah. 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. I've been well, six, I'm sorry. Almost 70. He's in 10 yeah. years, yeah. <laughs> um, as a realtor, can I do lease options for the clients? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. That, that seems like that's a huge book uh, of business. If I was right an there. agent, I would, if I was an agent, which I'm not, if I was an agent, I would say, all right, Mr. Seller, here's some options. Because, see, that's the thing is that when we talk to sellers, they love us because we're saying, you know, keep the listing or keep it for sub owner while we're marketing the lease option. Like, wait a yep. minute, I can do that? Yeah. Because the owner wants options. He's, he doesn't want his hands tied with a, with a contract. says, oh, I can't do anything with my biggest you know, asset that I own. I can't mm -hmm. do anything with it for six months because I signed a contract. And if you're an agent, how many times do you get a buyer that can't currently qualify for financing? I don't know, but I, I would assume it happens quite often where mm -hmm. either financing falls through or, hey, I want to buy a house. I didn't go for my approval yet. And then it, they can't. Well, maybe a lease purchase we can do for it. So, and, and this is so going to be buyers a, Ryan, and sellers. a Ryan question, and I, I think I know the answer, but I like to play dumb. Um, you do I have well. a, Thank you. <laughs> so, Bob, uh, Bill the buyer, or no, no, Sam the seller has a house for $500,000. They, they sell their house, lease option. 
um, and they get their, well, you get a $20,000 down payment-esque lease option, and then maybe I should have used, well, I don't, I'm just pulling numbers out of the yeah, air, yeah. but then they're paying what, $5,000 a month in, in rental fees, and then a year later, they're like, okay, I want to buy. A year later- During that time, they're working on fixing whatever- Their they, credit, yeah. 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 But in that time, that sixty thousand dollars, that doesn't go towards the purchase price, does it? It does. No, what they pay us goes towards the purchase price. What they're paying per month oh, doesn't. Oh yeah, doesn't. The, yeah, right. the rent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so because so in this scenario, you, you took the twenty thousand. So at the when they're selling it for four eighty, at the end, the sand the seller, they're only getting four eighty, but they still collected sixty thousand. For the, yeah, so and I know I'm using stupid numbers. Yeah, but. so so the bottom. Let me let me let me say this from an educated standpoint. Yeah, <laughs> the owner keeps all the cash flow. Right. So they get the they get full price. They save six percent on commission, and they're getting cash flow. So on a four hundred thousand dollar house, they're going to make minimum minimum twenty four thousand dollars more by using us by using lease purchase and the down payment that they that we profited from in the, from the beginning when they moved in that will reflect as their down payment when they go for financing 10, 11, 12 months down the road as well. So, so it doesn't math, disappear. So the way the math works is the, the down payment, even though they're not getting in it and it goes against their, their, their uh, selling price, whatever, the, the math between the, the, the 12 months or whatever, 18 months of rent, uh, cash flow more than makes up for it. Oh yeah, yep. Got it. Yep. All right, sorry, that was mine. Uh, and I know you- <sighs> Any other tangents you wanna go off on? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, rabbit hole. Uh, what if, what, if the ha what happens if the end buyer can't get financing or defaults? Mm. Okay, good question. Uh, it's incredibly, incredibly rare for one of our buyers not to, not to purchase because of all, everything we've got in place. But we're monitoring them and yeah. we're you know, keeping tabs mm. on them. But let's go down the, 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 the path of, well, something, if they're not gonna buy, it's typically a life-changing situation, like a, jo uh, a divorce, a, a job yeah. loss. A death, I've had a that death. happen. Yeah. Um, in that case, now they, at the end of the day, the buyer has the option to purchase the property during the time frame that we set. Have there been occasions, you know, crazy scenarios like you're describing where we had to go to the seller and ask them, would you mind extending this for another month or two? And, I've never had a seller say no, because why would they, right? You know, well then they're gonna put on the market with the realtor and take another, you know, however many days. No, they're more often than not okay with that. But at the end of the day, when we're putting a buyer in there, we make sure that they can get the, the financing within the option period. And if not, we can extend it worst case scenario or ask for an extension. Mm -hmm. And as far as liability on any of this? For, uh, for who? For us as investors. Well, anybody that touches the, in, a, in any real estate transaction, anybody that touches the paperwork, at the end of the day, you know, has some liability. Words, they can be, you know, the, the saying, anybody can sue anybody. Right. But, um, uh, so anybody that touches the paperwork in a transaction could be named if so something goes wrong. So Bill but, the buyer is, comes in, makes payments for four, four months, and then trashes the house and then runs away. Th well, yeah, and that, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to sugarcoat. It doesn't happen. Because we're not dealing, that's a renter mentality. We're not, we're dealing with someone that is making 150000 or mm -hmm. so a year, household income, and they've owned a, a quarter million dollar home. They're just trying to move to another quarter million dollar home. So it just doesn't happen. Where that what could happen, Ryan, is if someone's doing houses that mm -hmm. we normally wouldn't do, like a hundred thousand dollar house. Or they're not or qualifying 90, the buyers yeah, for us, the buyers, they just have so the money. You gotta have the systems in place to screen that out. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, another question, what about the market shifting, uh, appraiser comes lower than the agreed price? Yeah, so, um, and I don't know if you ever, if you had any issues in Pennsylvania with houses not appraising. So here in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, out of, you know, 600 plus houses that we've lease optioned, I think we've only had about five or six where the appraisal didn't quite hit. Uh, the number we set, because we, when we set that number, it's pretty darn, it's, it's right on. Mm -hmm. But in those cases, at the end of the day, if it was, we were trying to get 250 and it came in at 246, you know, whatever, okay, well, now the seller can just, you know, reduce the price. He can either not sell it or reduce the price by the $4,000 or whatever. Or the buyer could come up with the difference theoretically. Yeah. So it's not, it's not an absolute end of the world. But what's thing, the seller's it, alternative? What are they gonna put on the market, now pay a realtor commission, and are, what are the odds they're gonna pay full appraisal? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So 
we're usually the best deal in town. And, and you know, and talk about the market shift. The market has been shifting for over a year, but as that market pulls back, lease options become more and more uh, uh, valuable because um, because now as the market pulls back, the seller's having to drop the price. Whereas with us, they, they really don't have to. You could, yeah, we do lease options in an up market, a down market. Now yep. we do do better in a down market. Yeah. But yes. we can we do you know just as well. We'll increase our marketing, whatever, um, in an up market as on well. On the on the flip side of things, <laughs> if I'm a seller, and and this is going to be one of the last questions, I promise, because I know you're like, uh, say you sell that house for two hundred thousand. All of a sudden, next door, something crazy is getting built in, and all of a sudden, your property is worth six hundred thousand dollars. The option's the option. So what that means right. is, just like in the stock market. Got it. You see, my background is the stock market and trading options. Well, if I buy a, an option on what, a Walmart at X amount of price, you know, to buy it, at, I don't know what's trading, but it's called 50 bucks, okay? And then before that option expires, now it's trading at 100, well, great. I mean, well, let me back up. If I'm going to, so you're asking about for the seller, right? Yeah. Okay, for the seller, okay, so I was going for the buyer, let me back up. So if the seller, if I have a stock and I'm, I'm selling the option to buy it at $50, but before that option expires, now the stock's at 80 bucks, well, okay, the buyer wins. Okay, but that's, I've never had anything that insane. You know. On the I've, flip side though, and this, and this is- And that's why this, we do 12 month lease purchase. Yeah, we do very years. short term. Yeah. Yeah. It's very and maybe this term. isn't insane, but this is just my, how my brain no. works. You as the facilitator of this, and you notice that, oh, by the way, Bill the buyer just got a windfall appreciation on a property. Could you step in and be like, "Hey, uh, I'd like to buy that option from you"? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could, you could, you could, you could buy the option. Anyway, just, anyway. Anything you want to ask? About? What if a UFO landed? I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was just like, Ooh, make money. Uh, so real quick, again, uh, this will be the last last question um, because it kind of segues into kind of uh, helping you guys out. Documentation. Where can people get documentation for this side? Do your students, uh, the people in your program, do they get that documentation? Oh, yeah, definitely. So anybody that, that comes through us that gets the, uh, you know, we've got the home study course, which is, uh, you know, online training and uh, do documents at the Wazoo, physical materials as well. And we've got the three-day event that we do. We've got one uh, in Houston and Cincinnati. Uh, and we'll be in February. We've got one coming up in Dallas, I think, in March. But uh, when they get the materials, it comes with the documents. Doesn't matter what state you live in, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. they get all the documents. So, yeah, and no, the bottom line is go to leaseoptionclasses.com, nine ninety seven. You get everything. Got it. Yep. Uh, go. Final thoughts. Did I miss anything? Did we cover it, or you just you're like I got to get it. I was I just one one thing for me. I, when we took a break, I thought someone was going to bring me water and redo my makeup. Um, well, that didn't happen here. Yeah, this is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, um, well, I appreciate you guys coming in. How do we get a hold of you guys? You can go to leaseoptionclasses.com. Got it. If you want to see, real quickly, if you want to see actual deals that we're doing, you can go to leasingtobuy.com. There's no training on there. It's just, that's just the, those are the deals we're doing, and you can mm -hmm. see them nationwide. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, appreciate you guys coming in. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Yeah. Uh, check out their course on Propelio Academy. Uh, propelio.com slash academy uh, we've got a lot of events we got are doing a two-day live stream on wholesaling tomorrow and uh, Saturday got the January DFW event on the 14th got a Houston event on the 21st a lot of stuff going around so thank you everybody check out these guys on the Academy and we'll see you around